Hello! Hi! Hello! Hello! My name's Vix, and today I'm going to teach you how to make a persona! Now, unfortunately, I can't really teach you how exactly to make a persona because it's honestly really up to you how you create your persona because it's a personal character that means something special to you and has personal connections. But I can give you a few pointer but I can give you a few pointers on how to think of ideas and things to add to your persona and even show you how and even show you guys how I made my own personas. Many of you know that my persona is Rika, the arctic fox who is blue and has control over fire and rides a scooter and has a giant hammer, blah 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 blah. But my other persona is Vix. Vix and Dwunk, which is where my name comes from, obviously. Vix and Dwunk is a cat deer. Both of these personas represent me. In total, I actually have nine personas. And some of them are more important than others, some of them I use more than others, but they all represent something that is very personal and special to me. Four of them, for instance, I have right here on my t-shirt. Two of these characters have had a huge makeover. So first, let's, let's talk about Rika and how she came to be. I made Rika 10 years ago on my birthday. She was actually a Sonic fan character. Yeah, I know, of course, that's how they usually start. But she was a Sonic fan character, she was the sister of Tails- Oh, I'm so original. I really had no reason behind her other than I liked Tails, and I thought he was the coolest character in Sonic, so I wanted to create a character that was similar to him. Now, Rika isn't the first character I've made, but she was the first character I've ever made that represented myself. And at the time, I didn't even know what a furry was. I was just on DeviantArt drawing stupid little things. She was blue. She wore an outfit that my Gaia Online avatar wore, which was black with blue flames on it. And her shoes were based off of a pair of shoes that I colored with markers one day when I was bored. She also had a fire demon form because, yeah. I got rid of that, but you can see my very first picture of Rika here. As you can see, she is very different now, but she went through many, 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 many different changes. And I will post my collage of Rika through the ages down below in the description because <laughs> she went through quite a transformation, but she also transformed as I did. So by looking at how she has changed, you can really see like when I went through my emo phase, when I wanted to kill everybody, when I hated the world, and then the time when I was crazy about rainbows. And now, now Rika's pretty good. I like, I like her design where it is. It's simple, but it's different. So why is Rika a fox? I picked a fox because Tails was a fox and I wanted her to be related to Tails. And um, I made her blue because I like the color blue. And her name is Rika because I just picked a random name out of the blue. She kind of represents who I want to be in life. I kind of want to be as outgoing as her to be able to express myself and the way that I made this character be able to do that. So when I take the name Rika, I feel a lot more like how I want to see myself as. It's not like I'm hiding behind a mask or anything. It's just when I take the form of this character, I feel like I don't have to hide behind a mask. I can just be how I want to be and nothing can stop me and that is exhilarating. Which is why I have been able to keep this character around for so long. Because ever since I created this character, I have become way more happy with myself, way more outgoing, easier to make friends, just all of the above <laughs> since I've made this character. 
Rika is an arctic fox, not a normal red fox like some people may think she is. But she is an arctic fox. Why? Because they're really fluffy and I like fluffy and I like warm. I get really cold really easily. She has power over fire, blue fire specifically. She doesn't really use it all that much, but it's sort of like a self-defense kind of thing and a way for her to show off. And it's also, once again, warm, and warmth is very, very important to me. Rika also loves strawberries. I can't even begin to talk about how much Rika loves strawberries. And why does Rika love strawberries? Because I love strawberries. Strawberry socks! Now, like I said, Rika is not my main persona. My main persona is Vix, and she is a cat deer. She is a cat deer because ever since I was little, I've always felt deer-like. Because, like, I'm shy, I'm small, I'm thin, I'm fast. And now later in life, I act sort of cat-like sometimes. Maybe it's because I live with three cats. It, 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 I feel like... If I were represented by any animal, it would be either a cat or a deer, so why not both? A cat deer! And she's a calico cat deer because calicos are my favorite and they're colorful. Vix is like the literal representation of myself. So when I don't want to draw myself as a human, I draw myself as a cat deer instead of a person. And Vix, you can see here. She's cute. In addition to Rika and Vix, I have several other personas, and I will flash through them here. All of those guys you can see on my Fur Affinity as well, which I will link below. So now to get on to the important part, how to create your own persona. Now, like I said, Rika and Vix, ugh, Rika and Vix were both made based off of how I personally feel. Now, personas can really be anything. They can just be a character that you would like to express yourself as. They can be a character that specifically represents you or really anything you want. A persona is like an extension of yourself, a way that you want other people to see you. In order to make a persona, you can basically strip yourself of all of your identities. So you can strip yourself of your gender, your sexuality, your skin color, your anything. You can just take it all away and start from scratch. For instance, there's- I actually have two different Rikas. Rika Fox, the Arctic Fox, who is a female, and Rika Duma, which is a cheetah and a male. I have both of them because I feel that both types of Rika, male and female cheetah fox, represent a different part of who I want to be. Now they're the same character and are interchangeable, basically. If you want to see Rika Duma, there he is! He's so cute and covered in spots! A good first step to creating a persona would be to pick an animal. There are many 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 animals out there obviously or you can make a hybrid like how vix is or you can make up your own creature like i have made my own species called a foozel and one of my characters is in fact a foozel and you can check out the foozel here and i will also have my fur affinity down below where you can check the foozels out for yourself and i will be creating adoptables for foozels and you can even create your own eventually. So to help pick an animal, it would be good to think about like what kind of animals you like, what kind of animals you feel represent you. It's all personal preference, but to help narrow it down, really think about what animal you feel would help represent you the most. So maybe you really dream of being able to fly or freedom, maybe a bird is the right character for you. or Maybe you feel like you're the leader of the pack, or you're really outgoing and courageous, and maybe then a wolf or a husky. Don't let anybody tell you that your character is wrong, because as long as it makes you happy, then it's not wrong. 
It's exactly how you want it to be and nobody else can tell you what your persona should be. For this example, I am going to go with something simple. I'm gonna go with a fox. Here we have a drawing of a simple fox character. As you can see, he's got the foxy ears, snout, and it's just basic fox. Now, I did something weird with the legs, as you can tell. This leg is digigrade, and this leg is plantigrade. Digigrade means that they walk on their toes, like they have a giant foot, and they walk on their toes, similar to like cats and dogs. Plantigrade means they walk flat on their foot, so like humans or bears are plantigrade. Now, plantigrade obviously would make your character more humanoid, and then wearing like clothes and shoes and stuff would be a lot easier. I'm going to make both of his legs digigrade so that you can see what that would look like. Here is our guy with two digigrade legs. They look pretty good, I think. I think I'm gonna make him a happy fox because I like happy things. Here's our happy buddy. Happy fox. And he looks like he needs a hairdo. I'm gonna give him a cool mohawk. And it goes down his back a little bit. Now after you have your animal picked and hair and personality picked, it's time to do colors and patterns. Now, you can go as simple as the basic coloring. You can color this box bright pink with purple polka dots if you want to. You can color it to look like the universe. Anything. Just the one thing you shouldn't do is directly copy off of another person. When you can do anything you want to do and create whatever comes to your mind why copy off of somebody else don't do it all right back to this guy what else can we add to him let's give him some cool colors i'm gonna say that this guy is very outgoing so what colors i only have four colors here blue green blue green purple and pink so I'm gonna put these colors to the test and see what I can come up with. All right, I have finished this guy up. He is very, very brightly colored. And of course my dry breaks markers aren't gonna make it look the best, but here we go. Da, 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 da. He is very bright and colorful and he's got them nice pinks. So of course, when you, if you would see this guy walking down the street, you'd be like, wow. So if you want a character that is really outgoing and really likes attention. Bright colors are always a good thing for that. Maybe your character is really reserved and doesn't really like to be around people. Maybe darker colors or muted colors would be better for that one to help complement that kind of personality. But of course, these are only suggestions and you could have a character that looks like this who hates the world and doesn't want to talk to anybody. That's also an option. There is no wrong way to do this. I would like to suggest that when thinking of a color scheme and the way that colors work with each other, I would suggest looking up different color palettes and messing around with the colors that you want to use first and then be able to decide, well, this color looks better covering most of the character while this color works better as highlights. And these two colors don't really work together when they're right next to each other. Maybe you want a character whose colors are like POW! There's no right way to do it, there's no wrong way to do it. It's all exactly how you want it to be, whatever makes you happy. 
And if you can't make a character as fast as I made this guy, then that's no problem. It took me 10 years to make Rika. So if you can't make your character on the first try, don't worry about it. Sometimes it takes a while. Sometimes you may want to change it up a little bit, like Rika has been changed over the years many, many times, and now she is a fox and he is a cheetah. Maybe you make a fursona that's a fox, and you realize a couple months later that you'd rather it be a bird. That's fine. You can change the design of the character, but keep the colors and patterns. Ugh. Maybe you don't feel like making a character right now, or you don't think you're creative enough, which I'm sure you are. You just got to give it some practice. There's many artists out there who sell adopts of different character designs of different species, like I'm selling adopts of Foozles. So you're welcome to go and buy a, an adopt off of an artist and then use that as your persona. Or you can go to an artist and order a character design commission off of them. And I do those as well, where you just give them some ideas and they come up with something and you two work together on a character that is right for you. Well, I think that pretty much sums up everything for this video. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys with starting to make a persona. Remember, it can be really anything you want it to be. If you guys want to know any more tips, let me know down in the comments and I will see what I can do. If you guys want to know anything more about any of my characters, I can do a video just based on my characters and what they do and what they're like. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next time. Boop.